Okay, so today's session we're looking at the contradictions of chess. Such things as rooks owning the open files. In most situations, rooks owning the open files is quite crucial and can lead to a better position and a stronger um, strategy being implemented. But on certain circumstances, that if that open file is protected by bishops and queens and rooks and knights and it's just not safe to actually own that file then it wouldn't be appropriate to get your rooks on that open file so that's like a contradiction in itself rooks being in the center of the board most of the time they're not really designed for that they're not flexible enough to do that so either you're going to be exchanging it off or you're going to be sacrificing it for a lesser piece for a better position or something um, rooks don't have a place in the center of the board but the contradiction is exactly what we just said there if you feel there's a benefit to putting it in the center and taking a piece off the board or gaining some type of advantage then you can do so it all depends at that moment in time which maneuver is better for your pieces and better for your game things like putting checks on the king um, there are nugatory checks you know on the king the king might be available for a check to be put on it but does it really improve your position are you actually enhancing their position can the king dance around the board and then just take pieces off the board and then get you into checkmate because you're so busy chasing their king that you forget about your own king so the contradictions are quite quite significant and they come across every piece movement that you know of any concept that you've heard of um, within chess you can turn it on its head and go well only in certain circumstances will that concept be applicable yep knights on the knights on the rim are dim not always because if they're crushing your king or they're improving their position or they're holding court on supporting their pieces coming down and attacking then they're doing a good job and if you can't take that knight off the board then it's doing a good job so it's really looking at all of these types of things that you hear about chess movements and really challenging them and just flipping everything on its head because that's what chess is from the moment you make a move um, there's a contradictory statement ready to be made so we're going to kick in and play some um, play some games with the contradictory nature of chess okay let's uh, have a look at the contradictory nature of chess Sometimes you don't even have to verbalize the contradictory nature. You can just visualize it. You can see it actually happening on the board. Let's just bring the knight out supporting the pawn here as he's attacking. Which is best, this one or this one? I'm going to opt for this one because the knight can come here putting two on but now the pawn is protecting and this knight is probably going to get hit I'm going to put a check on the king it's a half decent check let's take they're going quick now because I think they've got something sewn up I think my knight might get but we've got rid of the dark square bishop which is going to be taken here so we can castle so we can bring the knight here when this knight moves. And he's looking to attack here. Well, it's okay. It looks like he's... Let's attack the bishop. See what he wants to do. Let's hit the bishop again with a smaller piece. Hit it again with a smaller piece. And let's just keep pushing on towards it. And have we trapped our knight? Just bring the knight in here with a check on the king. It's also attacking the pawn. But I don't think it's a safe spot to jump back around again on take the pawn with a check on the queen queen comes here then I come here then I get taken off the board come here knight takes pawn takes okay resign myself to I'm going to be down a pawn or something 
So a plus one there, he's attacking, still protecting this area here. Any checks on his king? Nope. Let's go with that. On the bishop again. Squeeze the queen through somehow. Oh, it's got this pawn, but uh, that can't do much. Uh, hit this pawn. Try and make some space in front of the king. What is going on here? Okay, so bishops grab the pawn back. Has it improved their position? This is a crazy game. And we're down on time as well. Crikey. So he's hit the knight. I think we make much space. We want them to take, but I don't think they're going to take. Takes, takes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nothing much doing there, so we'll have to see what we can do. Let's block with the bishop. Gotta have to move faster. Bishop could have attacked the bishop actually. It's coming in for some sort of squish and not seeing it, but uh, we attack the queen. Maybe it's coming for the pawn here. And they've resigned. Excellent. I think that's a quite a meaty position there. Quick look at the analysis. Just uh, yeah, minus six. Yeah, that's all right. That was a crazy, crazy, crazy game. I'm sure that went up and down. I'm sure, that probably went. The gauge bars like jumping up and down all over. Oh, look. Okay, wait a minute. Let's have a look at the start. So let's just quickly go through it because it felt a little bit crazy. Okay, so it's dropped there. Doesn't like the knight move. Because it's potential for trapping and stuff like that. So that looks like the only real bad move after that. And then we're chasing the bishop around. It's going up and down, but it's more in our half, which is good. Yeah, nice. Okay, fair enough. See what it looks like when it gets to this point. Yeah, so we're happy with that. All right, so not as crazy as we thought, but uh, yeah, the earlier night move probably need to rethink that type of situation. Other than that, not too bad. Okay, let's block the pawn. Let's bring the knight out. One of the curious things for me is. Yes, we know all about the contradictory natures. We know about the concepts that we're dealing. But when we're actually in the game, how much do we really put in from the knowledge that we've gained? And do we just go for, oh, well, I prefer to do this. And that's what I'm liking to do. So we know that the pattern was they're going to attack here. We've brought the knight across here to protect the pawn. We've got the queen protecting as well. So obviously we're going to be looking to touch onto the knight to say what is it you want to do. Depending on what the opponent does next, of course. So they've gone a little bit mad now because they're saying, right, you blocked my move. I'm going to show you. So we'll take the pawn. It's actually plus one, but does it improve our position? Is it a tactical thing? Does he want to get rid of our knight somehow? But he's going to have to move his knight in order to do that. So instantly, I'm just thinking, these are a very aggressive player, you know, where they've come in here, then they've attacked down the centre here, trying to open the space up. Yep, so he's in, looking to potentially stop us from castling, so I said I was going to hit the knight. Still going to continue with that. I'm looking where I'm ascending the knight to, if it goes here, we can take. So is it coming back? So 
So they're probably thinking of ways of stopping my king from castling. I'm hoping that they dry out and they don't get castled themselves. And they're putting a lot of thought into this. All right, yeah, aggressive attacking. Wants queen exchange. No, wants the bishop to sit here, coming here. I'm gonna take. I don't think I need to overthink that. Do you know I could have just taken the knight off the board with the smaller piece. I hate the narration mode. Absolutely hate narration mode. God, I get. I just totally negate all my calculation. Oh, I just take the simple knight. But I suppose in a way the bishop's going to have a check on the king. But we can come back and defend. Oh, that's a missed opportunity of grabbing a higher piece. It looks like they've left the game. Let's have a shifty. Let's see what it's saying. Oh, minus four. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, I'm looking at it, I'm going, well, it still looks okay for us. But I think really we should have just taken that knight. So let's have a look. Yeah, C takes B5, dude. What are you playing at? But it, it only dropped three points and we're still advantageous in terms of the computer. So, well, it's not too bad, but narration mode just takes over. It's a killer. Sure, what that was. Uh, looks like they've left the game. Did they think it was free? Excuse me. Thank you. 
I was just going to say, I mean, he's going to be giving up the rook, if anything. So he has to do something, so he's getting two pawns. Clever. Defending the pawn. I think that's going to be a fair exchange, isn't it? If we attack the queen, king, if the bishop takes, bishop takes. But if the king comes here, which I think it's probably going to do, we can attack the rook to win the tempo back. Yep, exactly. So we'll hit the rook if they take take. Although they do get the bishop, but we will have a rook against their bishop. Right, so our bishop's safe. Knights can do something, but is it going safe? Can't go here, can't go there. Can't go here and can't go there, so it looks like it's probably going to end up getting trapped, isn't it? So come here, but if we get there, then we're okay. There's definitely no checks on his king. Let's just move the knight. Going for pawns. The bishop's protecting. King's on the white square. Just push the pawn up. I'm sure there's some cleverness going on, but bishop can take if he goes here. Coming here, attacking the pawn. giving us things to think about isn't it because we can take here but we're not going to could come here then we've got a two on one on the palm but then his rook comes in front so i don't think that's a problem is it so bring the bishop here protecting the pawn but if we do go for the exchange the bishop will take so that pawn might fall so we make it's doing a two on one protection so we'll give them something to think about knight can come here attacking the rook then it does have this but there's no check on the king get the rook in the game somehow this would be better wouldn't it because it's got a check on the king How good a check is it though? This is one of those contradictory things. Yes, we can win the pawn. But does his king get closer to our pieces? Trapping. Looks okay-ish, I think. Let's put the check on the king. Oh, and they've resigned. Okay, nice one.
Okay, let's block the pawn. Let's develop the knight, supporting. Let's catch it. Let's push the pawn. Let's take. Let's develop the knight. Let's take. Capture. And the bishop. Push the pawn. Sight the king here with virtual castle in. Let's capture. Could have put the check on the king, but we can't now. Let's just bring the bishop here. Let's attack the knight. Attack the rook. Let's just take the rook. All right, so let's take the pawn or push the pawn. It's a past pawn. Give them something to think about. Yeah, let's push the pawn. Attacking the bishop again. Let's bring the bishop here. Let's attack in it again. There's something wrong with our bishop. Oh, Fisher Spassky. We take, he pushes the pawn down. So it looks like we'll have to just give the pawn up. The bishop up, sorry. Okay, two linked pawns in the center. Oh, can't be bad. They moved a bit quick, didn't they? We can't defend the pawn though. So maybe we need to hang fire on celebrations. Put a check on the king. Win the tempo to support the pawn. Shall we just grab or push? Lock it down. Suffocating the king. Push. Just keep pushing, yeah? Push with a check. King comes across. Might as well get the rooks off the board. Oh, he's not doing that. So let's hit the rook. Let's go for a queen. Check. Oh, they resigned. Okay, nice one.